Welcome back to the Build Day Live here at Supermicro. I'm joined by Mike Scriber. Mike, what is it that you do here? I design really, really cool storage systems using NVMe. Very, very high density systems. And I'm quite excited about this one. Um, I've heard about them before. This is the Intel Ruler Form Factor SSD that is stuffing lots of SSDs into a 1U server. This is really cool stuff. Personally, I've, I'd heard about it. I'd never seen anybody who'd, who'd had one. Yet you tell me this, this is actually shipping. You, this can be bought today. Yes, it can absolutely be bought today. We, we are shipping this system today where um, this is a JBOF system where you can put 32 of these, which is an enormous number of drives that you can put in a 1U system. So JBOF being just a bunch of flash, flash yes. that means that there isn't a, a server in the back of here. What Correct. have we got in the back of this one? So in the back of this one, you actually connect it using PCIe. So you have uh, 16 lanes of PCIe that goes into four different ports. So that's 64 ports, 64 lanes of PCIe, which gives you about 64 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. So an enormous amount of bandwidth to be able to access all 32 of those drives. But you can buy this with this back end having a server in it as well. Yes, Supermicro. you can also do that. So with the JBOF, you can connect this up to eight different servers. So you can share all of this capability of the drives with multiple servers. Or if you want to have it all in one server, then you can buy this with, uh, with a, a motherboard. Essentially a, a dual socket ser dual server socket. at this end and a ridiculous amount of incredibly fast flash at that end. Exactly, because we still have all of those 64 lanes going out to those drives coming straight from those dual processor system that also has, we managed to pack in 24 DIMM slots, so you have an enormous amount of memory too, which is a great solution for uh, software-defined storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then, then building out multiple of these things, which would um, be an expensive proposition, but could get you an astoundingly powerful storage system as you get a cluster of these together. Yes, but we really do have lots of customers that talk about 150 petabytes, right? Which just sounds like an enormous amount. But if you try to do 150 petabytes, you want to have a 1U, right, that, could, that has the capability of a petabyte in a 1U, so that you're going to shrink all of that down to a much more dense solution. And that was particularly a design aim for the, this other system that we have, which is using much more mainstream medium mainstream. It's, it's, it's not the rule of form factor. It's a shape that you're used to. It looks like a hard drive. Right. Um, so, so what we did with this one, and it's, it's actually the same chassis. We share the same chassis, but we have this really cool modular design where we have um, these sleds. And with the sled, I can access, this is just a U.2 tray. So U.2 NVMe, very, very fast, easy to install with these little tabs. Pop it in, pop it, pop it, and you got to look and see, and then you can slide these back in. But this tray alone has 16 drives. Then we have a tray over here with another 16 drives. So that's 32 drives. And with 32 drives, once we come out with 32 terabyte drives, then you'll have a petabyte in a 1U. And that U.2, that's a connector that looks like a normal hard drive connector, but it's an, a PCI Express signaling over that connector. Correct. So that's, again, that NVMe direct onto the PCI bus on, on the processor, uh, incredibly fast and, and really high parallelism of the I.O. It's one of the, from my point of view as a VMware guy, parallelizing my I.O. Is, is really important all the way down. Absolutely. You want to parallelize that and you also want to have the low latency that NVMe provides. The other thing that the JBOF gives you is, be, is, is that disaggregated storage because what I can do with the JBOF is I can put in, if I need more storage, I can get more, buy more of these boxes without buying more compute. Right? So I can stack these up and connect them all together and have more and more storage without more and more compute, which gives you that disaggregated storage. So I can have a, a series of one use servers that are um, high CPU performance, so really high core count, and, and again, 24 DIMM sockets in, in most of those uh, models from, from Supermicro. Just Correct. have the boot device in that one new server, and then out the back, pass the PCI Express down to here, and consume maybe two or four or eight of the, um, the U.2 SSDs or the, the rulers. Or the rulers, exactly. They both work the same way, and from the software and the system standpoint, it doesn't really care which, 
which NVMe device you have, whether it's a ruler or whether uh, it's, it's a, a standard U.2. Now, I will say the ruler, very cool technology, and I mean that thermally. This is a great thermal design, and that's where it has a bit of an advantage over U.2 is, is the thermal design. So you can say truly it is a cool NVMe SSD. That's one of the things I noticed as I was loading the bunch of rollers into the front is that rather than walls between them to guide the rollers in, there's little pegs top and bottom mm -hmm. so that there's a maximum airflow along the sides of this. That is right. absolutely the idea of the ruler is it allows that maximum airflow to go through. And normally you have a backplane, a backplane that comes across here that would block your airflow. Mm -hmm. And the challenge in designing a backplane is to cut as many holes in there as possible so you can get some air through the rest of the Without system. Without cutting all the signaling lanes. Without cutting, the, exactly. So what they did with the ruler is they took that backplane and laid it down flat and then have connectors that are across here. What we did for this solution to make this solution solve that same problem is instead of putting a backplane like this, we rotated it 90 degrees. The backplane runs like this. It runs front to back rather than side yes. to side. Yes, so you have two parallel backplanes that come right through here and allows that air to flow all the way through, all the way across, unhindered by a backplane. Without having to put holes in your backplane to, to get the no holy, nice. No holy backplanes here. <laughs> Yes. Now these products are all shipping today. Correct. Um, it's 16T uh, is the largest size on the U.2. U.2, we have uh, eight terabyte right now right. in the uh, in the Intel. We have um, let's see. I think we have larger capacities with other brands sure. like uh, Samsung mm -hmm. and Micron. I think Micron's got an 11 terabyte okay. drive right now. So it's climbing up towards the, the 32T up. that you need in order for this to be a petabyte in one U. Intel um, keeps promising it's coming, it's coming. They'll, so they'll deliver eventually. Yes, I'm sure around. they will. Cool. Well, these are both really cool systems and uh, I'd like to take uh, either of them home to my lab, although I think that would exceed my luggage allowance. <laughs> I think so. They weigh just a little bit, not too much. What else have we got in the way of futures on these things? So we're heading towards greater capacity. Um, what else might happen in, in the, the near future that would involve changes in here? The, the, the super near future is, and I mean, we're already beta released, and that's the server versions that have the, the motherboard in it. Mm -hmm. And then for U.2, U.2 is a standard that's going to live for quite a while. But for the Intel ruler, they're coming out with a second generation version, which they call EDSFF. Okay, so EDSFF long in particular for the long ruler shaped. Um, that's coming out probably next year, mm -hmm. end of this year, early next year. We'll see how that comes out. We have already designed a, a board to do that and powered that up just last week. So we have powered it up and it is successful and that's working really well. And so we will start all of our typical validation that we do. You will probably see a lot more of that one if you're interested at, at the Flash Memory Summit. Right. And that'll be another form factor that, that replaces this and that'll just be a, a change to the front of the unit exactly. here, isn't it? That's, Given that's the modular state. design, we slide out, in this case, slide out this, this um, modular tray and slide in a tray that supports EDSFF connectors. And it really, it's just a connector change. Is all we need to and do. all of the, the back switch is, is going to remain the same, all or the server the when, when that's certified up. Exactly. For the server and the JBOF, both of them will, will work just fine. Excellent. Well, these are really cool products. I think there's, there's going to be some interesting things built out of these. I can see those, those customers who talk about needing hundreds of, of petabytes of storage. These kinds of products can halve or quarter the amount of data center space that's required and presumably also reduce the, the heating and cooling costs of related to it. So Absolutely. some really interesting solutions built on top of these. Um, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please join us for further of the Build Day Live with Supermicro.